Support for LAist comes from HBO, presenting Succession, starring Brian Cox, Sarah Snook, Alan Ruck, Jeremy Strong, and Kieran Culkin. When a media tycoon considers retirement, each of his four grown children begins angling for their piece of the pie in this darkly funny drama. Andy Wire called the series the end-all, be-all of TV. Emmy eligible for outstanding drama series and all other categories. At the end of this podcast, you can hear conversation with the creator and cast of Succession. I'm Caitlin Hernandez, the lead reporter for our new project, Queer LA. We'll help you discover new things, find more queer friends, and figure out big life decisions on the LA Report and LAist.com slash Queer LA. LAist Studios. Taking a live look outside now, the clouds continue to linger as May Gray is about to morph into June gloom. This is How to LA, the podcast that helps you understand what's going on in our city. We'll see more clouds develop, marine layer clouds, and we have a chance for some light rain, a little bit of drizzle to develop as well, and the chance of thunderstorms primarily up in the mountain communities. Even with the weather. Mag, you you, you look, you're giving me like big (laughs) eyes, like... But you have an opinion about it. Tell me. Well, okay, because I've changed. I used to love the gray. I used to love, like, you know, mm-hmm. cute, cozy indoor weather because we hardly ever get it here. But now that it's the norm, I hate it. And I want to put on <laughs> biker shorts and I want to walk in the sun every afternoon for my little pick me up. Um, I feel like I'm laying down a lot more in my free time. I'm going to blame that 100% on the weather. Yeah, it's kind of a season of depression. Yeah. What are you doing to get, you know, <laughs> your weather on, Mr. Evan Jacoby? Uh, you know, same boat, honestly. I So I grew up in Los Angeles and drought, and I thought I could control the rain when I was like five years old. I thought I was like the god of rain. It was my favorite thing. I loved it when it rained. And now I'm feeling the same way. I started doing this thing in the morning where I have to like step outside of the house for like 10 minutes and actually absorb light to wake myself up (laughs) because it's so cloudy that it's like doesn't get into our bedroom. Like that's what they do in like Sweden, like in in the north north is like they don't get enough vitamin D. So they have to like incubate outside. And I'm like, I'm I'm incubating. Oh, you're you're supplementing. I'm incubating. You're supplementing. Okay. Jacob, what's the deal? What's the deal uh, with the science behind it? Or how do I feel about all the gray? Because I think you are uh, all a bunch of whiners uh, when it comes to this. <laughs> I got to say. To help us understand I, I, what's well, up with these I gray do, days, uh, I hit up Jacob Margolis. He's the LA's science reporter and just wrote a story about May gray and June gloom. I, too, uh, you know, get a little depressed with the gray weather at times. I also remember what it's like when it's 120 degrees Mm -hmm. and cooking and I have all the shades drawn and I am just miserably hot and can't even go outside midday. So I am reveling in every single strange June drop of precipitation. Uh, and saying, please, more, 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 and don't go away. Um, You know, I also would ask, are most of you uh, not in the San Fernando Valley or in Palmdale area? (laughs) We're not. I grew up in the valley. No, I I was you my whole life until like maybe three weeks ago. Meg's nodding her head. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. Soon, it will be a gajillion degrees, and then you could have me on and we can complain about the hot weather. I would love that. We're probably going to do the same. We'll, that, yeah. well, we'll do the same we'll thing. We'll still be complaining. Okay, <laughs> that's we're, we're good Californians, we, that's what Cali- we do each season. <laughs> so, Jacob, we've covered this on the podcast before. Um, we've had weather folks on here, and they said California has weird weather overall. And I feel like we're just experiencing a longer bout of it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um I do miss the 72 and sunny days. So can you explain what the heck is happening? Yeah, I mean, California has weird weather because we have such varying landscapes throughout the state. I mean, you have really tall mountains, you have uh, the beaches, you have the desert. I mean, so you're going to get extremes all over the place. But here in Los Angeles, in Southern California, I mean, this weather, this May, gray and June gloom is common enough 
that we have names for it. And it is primarily uh, just a marine layer from over the ocean creeping inland. And it's been fantastic this year because what it does is it reflects all the sunlight away from the land and keeps things a bit cooler. And as it gets hot throughout the day, a lot of the time it will burn off. Obviously, as people know. But right now, the unusual part of what we're going through specifically this week is that it's also associated with uh, potentially some precipitation and some thunderstorms, which are not rare. It's not like it never happens this time of year, but it is it is a little bit unusual. And that's because this latest storm moved up from around Hawaii. And a lot of the time uh, by summer, we have, I guess, atmospheric conditions that don't really let storms necessarily like come here and show up from that region. Uh, but, you know, it's still it's still possible during this time of year. And again, soon things are going to heat up and uh, keep all the nice, cool, wet stuff away. So I know that there's a reason why there's so much gray lately, right? And it has to do with the uh, atmosphere warming and cold air over the ocean. Can you explain that? Yeah, so the ocean holds on to uh, the cool weather, the, the cold temperatures for quite some time, but the air mass is warming over land. And so, you know, if you drive out to Palmdale or drive over to Arizona, it's, it's going to be much hotter. And so that mm -hmm. hot air, as it kind of flows out and meets with the cooler air that is right over the ocean's surface, um, basically the air cools, it condenses as it reaches its dew point, and you get these low level stratus clouds or the gray you see in the sky. Those clouds then also push inland. They reflect the sunlight back into the atmosphere away from the ground and things get kept much cooler than they'd be without them. They're really important for keeping things cool. And one of the worries is with climate change um, that this marine layer will burn off uh, faster, especially along the coast, requiring like more people to need air conditioning and, and that sort of thing. All right, Jacob, I know there's so much to cover, so we're going to hit that after the break. Thanks for listening to this LAist Studios podcast. Can I tell you about our news site? It's LAist.com, and it covers news, culture, and happenings that matter to Angelinos, like how and where to get your vaccine, how Southern Californians are fighting for racial justice, local and state politics, and how you can still take part in our vibrant food and art scene. We're working hard every day to bring you local news you care about. I hope you'll check it out. LAist is true LA stories powered by you, at LAist.com. Hi, I'm Caitlin Hernandez, the lead reporter for LAist's new project, Queer LA. As a queer and non-binary journalist, I'm excited to have this project focus on the joys of being in the community and highlighting the creativity and culture we have to offer. You'll learn about people and places to discover new things, find new friends, create some change, and figure out big life decisions. All on the LA Report and LAist.com slash Queer LA. And we're back with Jacob Margolis. Hey. So, you know, I'm glad that we had some sun this weekend because it was We Hope Pride and it felt a little homophobic that the sun was showing, you know. Um, well, I but, thought exactly. Thank yeah. you. So, But she did come out. The sun came out uh, Friday and Saturday. It was a little gray on Sunday, but that's okay. The rest of the week is gray again. Mm -hmm. There's thunderstorms, that, like you said. They're being predicted for this following week. How long do we deal with the with the weather? Yeah, so this gray is going to stick around. But if we're talking specifically about the storms, they should wrap up this week. But we could still see more kind of creep along. We have to see how the weather develops. Now, come midsummer, uh, you know, we could start to see more monsoonal moisture. And so we might see even more lightning and thunderstorms, uh, especially up in the mountains. But for right now, things should wrap up in the coming days. So what's up with August? I, I know there's there's something happening for that month, which is, by the way, my birthday. So, hey, hopefully something cute. Well, for your birthday, uh, you might get uh, fires. Um, oh, that's because... No, no. no none of that. <laughs> so we don't want that. The truth is that by August, that's when stuff really starts to dry out. And we had such a wet year this year that, I mean, grasses that would normally be uh, maybe knee high. I, I just talked to some people in the fire world today. They're saying they're like, you know, uh, up to their shoulders, up to their chests, what have you. And so a lot of those grasses um, do start to dry out by August and September. And if we do get some some lightning, which oftentimes could be dry lightning if it is related to the monsoon uh, weather, monsoonal weather, um, you know, that could start brush fires. 
That said, a lot of our environment is going to stay quite moist. A lot of these bigger plants are going to stay quite moist for some time. So this is more of a concern in, uh, you know, maybe chaparral or uh, grassland areas, less of a concern up in our mountains where there's still going to be snow for quite a bit and things should stay quite wet. But August is really when we start to shift our minds towards fire. And then when the dry winds come along at the end of September, that's when like the bigger fires become more of a concern for us. Yeah, I think Mammoth is going to have a longer ski season this, you know, until like it's August amazing. maybe. So, you know, there's some there's some good with this June gloom. And, you know, what's the July term that they use? July for the thighs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, July. Yeah, I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Shorts out. Um, so I we've talked about El Nino before. How does that factor into anything we're seeing now? Yeah, so El Nino still hasn't shaped up. It's developing right now. The likelihood of it developing is very high, like over, I think it's around or at 90%. And it looks like it's going to be a very strong one. Statistically, looking back in the records, we don't usually see impact from El Nino until the winter here. And oftentimes it's associated with wetter weather. That said, there are definitely El Nino years that are extremely dry. So there's no guarantee that that'll come to pass. I'll be really interested to see, like, I'm sure there's researchers that are watching this and are going to look at, you know, what this year meant a couple years down the line. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure there will be some sort of influence. So we just broke down the good, bad, and the ugly of the weather. I want to know any tips that you're going to be doing, Jacob, to get through June. You know, I, I know that you say you appreciate the, mm -hmm. you know, the darker days. You don't want it to be hot in the valley. I get it. But, w you, just you know, need to come to my house when it is like 60 mile per hour winds desiccating my skin and like this wildfire smoke creeping in through every vent. But. OK, I do get bummed out by it a little bit. Look, I, I am from Los Angeles as well. When I lived in like D.C., it was unbelievably depressing because it's just gray and miserable and the weather is awful. So we have it much better than them. But to keep me on track right now, it is peach season. It is nectarine season, apricot season, strawberry season. And just about daily, I am baking crumbles and tarts and pies and anything else sugary and sweet and tart and delicious that I can sink my teeth into. So while it is miserable for weather, the produce right now is just out of this world. That'll keep me tied over until it is miserably hot and windy and, uh, you know, we're sucking in wildfire smoke. I think you just kind of invited me over to go try these desserts. <laughs> so that's what you got yourself into. Sorry, You're Jacob. You're always welcome. <laughs> yeah, come on and buy. Thanks. All right. Well, Meg, what are you doing to keep it cute during the June gloom? I have also just purchased my first stone fruit of the season, mm. so I, I'm enjoying that. Um, but no, I'm really just leaning into my winter activities because I do know that at some point it'll be sunny, 75 and sunny every day once again, and I'll be like, God, I wish there was some diversity in this weather. So reading, watching TV during the day on the Runner weekends. Pump rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, what are you doing? Well, last year, it was so hot. We were sleeping on the couch in the living room because that's the only part of the apartment that the AC actually hits. We did that for about like a week, maybe 10 days. Oh, God. I'm really hoping that at least like, even if I have to go stand outside and incubate for 10 minutes in the sun to like wake myself up, at least I can know that I'm not sleeping on the couch because it's, you know, 95 degrees at night inside the apartment. Okay, now you're getting me a little worried for the hot summer. So, <laughs> let's enjoy the said, rain. <laughs> let's enjoy this weird weather. <laughs> I'm just working working out until summer gets here, y'all. At least like, I have extra days to like, you know, work on that summer work bod. Work summer bod. There, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks to Jacob for breaking down the weird weather for us. Jacob, it's always nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. We've got more information on LA's gloomy weather on our website, elias.com slash howtoLA. And gracias to producers Megan and Evan for joining me in the studio and allowing me to rant about our LA weather privilege. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. Support for LAist comes from HBO, presenting Succession, the story of a media tycoon and his four grown children in a darkly funny comedy drama directed by Jesse Armstrong. 
Brian Cox portrays the patriarch of the family, Logan Roy. Logan is trying to make this Waystar rifle work, but he knows that it's a mess. Logan is responsible to this thing that he's created. Even though it's become slightly monstrous, he still thinks he can be in control of it. It's that element, which of course is so brilliant in the writing, that sense of implicit honor that Logan requires. He doesn't require devious plannings, which should the children are so busy doing time and time again. Spoiler alert. In a surprising turn, Logan Roy dies early in season four. Suddenly, episode three, he's gone. And when you've removed that one element, you're going, well, where's the conflict? When you're playing a part that is removed in that way, yeah, it has an effect on you. You, you feel, hang on, this is one of the greatest pieces of work I've ever been involved in. And suddenly, it's no more. But it's also, it reflects what our existence is about because we're here for a time and then we're gone. Here's Jeremy Strong, who plays one of the sons, Kendall Roy, and succession creator, Jesse Armstrong. When Jesse told me that that was gonna happen, I wasn't terribly surprised. I thought it made sense dramaturgically. And then when I read the script, I found it shocking and emotionally devastating. We didn't really have a death scene for Logan and that was obviously intentional. We wanted to capture a feeling of death that people experience in the modern era of separation, of communication over phone and email. Kieran Culkin plays Logan's son, Roman Roy, and Sarah Snook plays daughter, Shiv Roy. To some extent, this is just, you know, my job, and I'm trying to keep the emotional stakes up and put the character through that and then go home. But the problem with that is going home, yeah, that was Roman going through that, but physically, I actually had to go through that. So I was sort of, it's this weird, disconnect of like feeling physically like I've gone through some sort of emotional trauma, but I haven't. I found it was better for me to pull out of it completely so that it could be fresh still, because like for me, staying in means that it dulls and it's not good. Alan Ruck plays Connor Roy. I was taught a long time ago that you just have to accept the fact that your performance is going to come from all the other characters around you. If you're just open to what is going on, and when Sarah came in to tell me, and Sarah was a puddle, you know, that it was just like game over. You don't have to act. IndieWire has called Succession the end-all be-all of TV. Emmy eligible for outstanding drama series and all other categories. Succession is now streaming on HBO. Ma, pa, te presento a mi novia Luna. Hola, mucho gusto. Eric Galindo, co-host of Wild here, and this season, I'm going to tell you a fictional love story. The type of story that feels like a movie. It was inspired by my life. The woman I was dating, off and on again for a minute, comes to me and says she wants to move to Milwaukee. You're looking at the newest anchor for YWCC News, baby! I'm going to be the face of Milwaukee's leading news source. It was a road trip adventure across America. I was steeped in love and in one of the most confusing relationships of my life. This is a Southeast LA rom-com. It's the kind of fictional audio drama that forces you to confront parts of yourself. From Alias Studios, listen to Wild Season 2, I Think I'm Falling in Love. Catch the new season on NPR One, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.